Hey, if you're looking to start or expand a solar panel installation company, and maybe you've gone to the bank and they have asked you to provide a set of financial projections, well, you've come to the right place because we have built a financial projection template built specifically for solar panel installation companies, whether it's residential or commercial work. Uh, and I'm gonna walk you through this template here today, uh, show you how to fill it out, and show you how to create a set of five-year uh, financial projections for your business. Um, I'm also going to, if you make it to the end of the video, give you a discount code to be able to purchase this template as well. So make sure to stick around to the end. Um, I'll show you how to access that uh, coupon code so you can grab a discount for yourself. Um, before I get into the template though, just a little bit of background. My name is Adam Hooksema. I'm the co-founder of Projection Hub. And over the last decade, we've helped over 50,000 entrepreneurs create financial projections for all sorts of businesses uh, for potential investors and lenders. And so we are focused today specifically on our uh, solar panel installation business template. I'm gonna walk you through that now. Okay, so we are getting started here with the end in mind. So this is our at a glance tab. So once you've done all the work of filling out all your assumptions, your revenue assumptions and expense assumptions, uh, you will be able to see this at a glance tab, which will show you um, your projections for five years in, in table and graph format and some different uh, ratios, key ratios for your business as well. You'll also be able to get a five year income statement summary, five year cash flow summary, the five year balance sheet summary, as well as the income statement, cash flow, and balance sheet, all broken down by month for each of the five years. So that'll give you the, any detail that the bank might need, um, as well as the summary reports as well. But in order to, to be able to produce these reports, we have a little bit of work to do first. So we're gonna go back to our input assumptions tab and I'll show you how to fill this out. So the first thing to know is that any cell that's highlighted in blue throughout the model is an assumption that you can change. And so you'll be able to go through and, and make changes to these different assumptions here. Um, we're gonna start by looking at uh, how much personal investment you're gonna put in. So if you are going to the bank um, asking for a loan, they are probably going to ask you to put in some down payment, some skin in the game of your own personal investment. So we have assumed here a $50,000 personal investment into the business. Uh, we also for the accounts receivable, um, what we're assuming here is that 80% of your uh, work will be paid up paid up front, so as you provide the service, and 20% will be paid within 30 days. And so if you're doing kind of residential, typically is gonna, you'll probably get paid up front. Um, commercial work, 30 day terms with your commercial clients is probably normal. And so if for example, 80% of your revenue is residential and 20% is commercial, then you might wanna have this breakdown. Um, if it's 50-50, you could change this assumption to 50 like that. On the inventory side, let's assume that we have uh, maybe $15,000 worth of initial inventory on hand when we're, when we're starting. We're also gonna have some fixed assets. So uh, $50,000 worth of tools, $100,000 worth of trucks, and maybe a small storage building worth $100,000 where we're gonna store our inventory. And so these startup expenses add up to uh, $250,000 worth of fixed assets plus the $15,000 worth of inventory. But hey, you're only investing uh, 50,000. So we're going to need some additional cash. So that's where we're getting this $250,000 SBA loan that we've added in here, a 10 year or 120 month term at 8%. All right. So let's jump into our import revenue tab here. And what you'll see is you can add in advertising spend. And we're going to assume that, hey, it costs $30 for us to, uh, it costs $30 for us to uh, secure a lead um, from advertising. So if we spend $2,000 and it's 30 bucks a lead, we're gonna have 67 leads from paid advertising. We also think we're gonna have some organic leads, some word of mouth, um, you know, one neighbor's gonna see the other neighbor getting solar panels and, and, and maybe word of mouth spreads and, and that's how we also get some customers that way. So we're gonna have 87 total leads in a month and we're hoping that we're going to convert 10 of those residential uh, leads into new customers. So that'll give us nine new customers for the month. Now we can see our uh, residential installation services and pricing. So we have uh, solar panel installation, battery storage system, an EV charger, and then kind of the solar panel install plus the battery backup system combined. So you can see, so in this column, you're going to want to put what percentage of your total business you expect to be each one of these different services. So out of these nine new customers, we expect that, you know 45% to just purchase the solar panel installation and 25% to purchase the battery storage system, 15% to to do the EV charger and, and so on, right? And then you can put the average price points here for each of those services. And now you also want to put in your cost of materials and cost of labor. Um, so what I've done here is I am assuming, I've got a little calculation up here, I'm taking the price times 0.35. In other words, 35%. So we are assuming cost of materials is 35% for this job. And in this case, cost of labor is also 35% uh, for the labor cost of installing the, the panels. Um, and so 
that gives us a, a gross margin of 5,400 on that particular job or 30% of the job. Now, you'll want to build in your own assumptions, your own uh, cost of materials and cost of labor um, assumptions into your model here. Now, you'll also be able to add a annual growth rate in prices that you might expect. So we're expecting a 5% increase in the price that we can charge for our services to our customers and a 4% increase in our cost. So that our cost of goods sold will go up 4%. So we're actually hoping to increase our margin, our gross profit margin by 1% a year. All right, so moving on to our residential maintenance uh, services. So we are also assuming that uh, some percentage of our new customers are going to sign up for a maintenance program, maybe a maintenance and monitoring program. So we're saying 20% are going to sign up for this new uh, maintenance and monitoring program. And then of those that are signed up for the maintenance and monitoring program, we think 3% of them are going to cancel each month. So we'll have some people that leave. And we're saying the average monthly spend per maintenance and monitoring customer is $199. Um, maybe that's a little too high. Maybe we should say $99. And uh, we expect a cost of goods sold as a percentage of maintenance and monitoring revenue to be 33%. That's gonna cover um, the cost of, you know, a technician going out to do maybe annual uh, maintenance. All right, and so now we have our commercial solar services and we're really going through the same process here as with the residential. So we'll have an ad spend, a cost per lead. The main difference here is we think a, a cost per lead for a commercial customer is gonna be much larger probably than a residential. And so we have less leads, um, but maybe a higher conversion rate, and then certainly a higher price point for any of the customers that we do close. Uh, we'll have higher price points um, to play with here as well. So you can put in those different um, services. We've got, as a default, I put in kind of the commercial solar installation for a building and commercial installation for, for kind of a, you know, on the ground, a solar field, um, as well as a battery storage system for either option. So that'll calculate our commercial solar installation as well as gross profit. Same thing, we can have a commercial maintenance services um, offering as well, maybe at a higher price point, $7.99 a month, with a cost of goods sold. Now we'll have sales commission, so we expect that maybe there'll be a different sales commission percentage for residential than there would be for commercial. Maybe the commercial um, has tighter margins, it's more competitive perhaps, and so uh, maybe the sales commission is a, is a smaller percentage of the whole. Um, and so you can set those commissions here. And with that, you'll be able to uh, forecast your total revenue and uh, cost of goods sold. So we'll jump over to now our input other expenses. Um, now these first three expenses you'll see are blacked out because we have already added these, calculated them on the revenue tab. So we already added our advertising spend for residential and commercial as well as our sales commission as we just showed you. Um, so we'll focus on our other operating expenses here like credit card fees. Um, so we can enter in our expenses as a fixed dollar amount or as a percentage of revenue. And so let's say uh, our residential customers pay us with credit card primarily. And so what we picked here was a percentage of residential installation services. And we're saying 0.02, so 2%. 2% of the residential installation services revenue will be a credit card processing fee. And so as that revenue grows, that expense will automatically grow. So you're not having to try to calculate that. The model does that for you. Now we also have some fixed expenses like insurance, accounting, maybe rent. Um, we also put in a slot here for equipment rental. Maybe as you grow, you'll um, have equipment rental. And so we put a 5% of total revenue uh, because you, as you grow, you'll probably need more equipment and kind of a, in a, in, in a similar um, percentage of revenue. All right, now onto our input and salaries tab. Here we can add a receptionist. Maybe we have a receptionist in the office. We're starting right away in month one to be able to take customer calls and we have a manager. Um, and that's what we're starting with here in month one. But then as we grow, uh, let's say we're going to add additional site supervisors uh, each year. So month 13, month 25, month 37, month 49. Now, one thing I want to point out is these are salary positions. These are kind of the overhead cost, right? And so what you don't want to do is put in your, your installation technicians uh, or maintenance technicians. They should not go on the salaries tab uh, because we have already included their cost here in the cost of labor here. So if you, if you put a cost of labor here, that's what's being used to pay your labor uh, for the installation. If you also add their salary positions in here, you're gonna be double counting. So you either want to have zero cost of labor on the input revenue tab and just put in salary positions for the technicians uh, or, or vice versa. All right, that's really it. Um, at this point, you have a set of five-year financial projections for your business. And so um, as a thank you for making it to the end of the video, as I promised, uh, there is a discount code waiting for you. So you can go down into the description of the video below uh, and there'll be a link to a form that you can fill out and that will uh, send you an email with our most up-to-date coupon code. 
you'll be able to grab that coupon code and then there'll be a second link down in the description with a link to purchase the template. You'll be able to click that and then at checkout, use the coupon code to claim that discount. And if you have any questions at all um, as you're going, feel free to reach out to us or uh, leave us a comment in the comment section of the video below. And while you're down there, uh, if you like the video, if you found it helpful, give us a like and, and subscribe so we can help more folks uh, learn about uh, how to start and grow their business. So that, thank you.